Good morning, everybody. Uh, will Sergeant Biondo and Sergeant Hope please start their recordings? PC recording started. Uh, I'm here. Our recording started. Thank you. And Sergeant Hanna, if you can start with your opening statement. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing. At this time, would everyone please turn on their videos? Everyone can please turn their videos on. Thank you. Minimize disruption, please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent mode. Thank you for your cooperation. We're ready to begin. Is that, is that my cue? Yes. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, I'm Chair uh, Andy Cohen. Uh, welcome to this virtual uh, vote of the Committee, Committee on Consumer Affairs. Uh, unfortunately, I'm zooming from a district event, so I'm going to dispense with the uh, with the reading of an opening statement. Uh, we are going to be voting on uh, Intro 823B. Uh, I think we have full attendance of the committee. I'm going to ask Council to uh, identify the committee members and then the clerk to call the roll, please. Thank you. We'd like to acknowledge Council Member Chin, Ku, Ku Koslowitz, Lander, Brannon, and Yeager all present. And with that, I'm gonna ask the clerk to call the roll. Thank you. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, Committee on Consumer Affairs, introduction 823B, Chair Cohen. I vote aye. Chin. I vote aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote? Of course. Thank you. I'm going to be voting no on the bill today. Um, I'm desperate to do everything we can to support our restaurants, and I'm proposing a lot of other policies to do it. But I don't feel comfortable adding a 10% surcharge to the one sector of our economy where workers are still paid a subminimum wage of $10 an hour plus tips without doing something that either guarantees that we raise the minimum wage and give them one fair wage or that this surcharge is shared with workers. Um, and there's no requirement for either of those things here. As a result, I'm worried that some customers will tip less because having this 10% surcharge, even though it's not a service surcharge, is gonna mean that some people tip less and that workers' wages could go down and they're already getting less in tips because they have fewer tables. Um, so I wish this bill were adjusted so that those folks who got it either had to pay a minimum wage or share the surcharge with their workers. And I'll say I'm also distressed that this council has not acted yet on other worker supportive bills during COVID the bills to provide a just cause firing protections um, uh, have languished and not moved forward for fast food or other pandemic workers. And the delivery workers for all these restaurants who are gig workers still don't even have paid sick leave, which we could require and have a bill to do so. So um, given that those other bills are languishing, uh, and in particular that we're not doing something here to make sure that this benefits restaurant workers, our restaurants are hurting, but boy, our restaurant workers are the ones who can't pay their rent at home or put food on their own tables. So um, I'd love to see this bill adjusted so that it did either require minimum wage uh, or shared the surcharge with workers. And for that reason, I'm voting no. Thank you. Brennan. I vote aye. Jaeger. Mr. Chairman, may I be excused to explain my vote? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, here's what I think we're doing for workers today. We're keeping their jobs alive. All throughout the city, we see restaurants closing every single day. They've been closing for months, and we are literally the gap uh, to whether or not restaurants are going to be able to survive in the city or not. For the last several months, restaurant owners have been paying for their existence out of their own pockets without the ability to make income. Those who have been able to uh, to return to business 
uh, have done so at considerable loss, but with hope and faith that somehow their government, their city, will step in and return them. Uh, this city has failed them. The state has failed them because we've kept them shut for so long. The outdoor seating, while lovely, doesn't work uh, for every restaurant. It doesn't work for most restaurants in my district. It doesn't work for the tiny pizzeria that is not able to put any chairs or seats outside and still at the same time can't seat anybody inside. We're finally at the place where we have some real way of offering restaurants the ability to, um, to tack on this temporary surcharge. And what, what restaurants can do instead of this surcharge is simply raise their menu prices. And there's nothing we can do to stop or, 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 uh, to, or hinder them from doing that. So what, the reason for this bill, in my view, is so that restaurants can clearly identify that they're back, they haven't raised their prices, they're not raising their prices, they have a temporary and uh, surcharge that they can put on to tell their customers, look, stand with us, come out, eat in our local restaurants, keep us in business. The, and, and what the restaurants are doing in turn is offering all of those employees that we care so much about jobs. Because when these restaurants close, the, re the, the restaurant owners will be able to cash out and uh, hopefully be able to recoup some of their investment. And the people who will be hurt the most are not the consumers, not us. We won't have a place to eat, that's fine. We can go grill our own hot dog. The workers will not have jobs. There are no jobs left in this city for people to get. Let's get them back to work and let's do it right away. So I vote aye on this, and I'm very grateful to the colleagues uh, who have proposed this bill and who are supporting it. Thank you. Thank you. By a vote of six in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions, the item has been adopted by the committee. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Falkis, can I conclude? Yes. All right. I'm concluding this hearing of the Committee on Consumer Affairs. Thank you, everybody.